welcome back to the Torque Test channel. We're back at it with four and a half to five inch angle grinders, you know, the tool that's in our intro. And forget everything we've shown you up till now, seeing what the models we bought today can do, it changes everything. We've got Bosch's newest 10 amp corded replacement, rigid octane versus the newer rigid brushless model, plus max output versus octane batteries, settling that debate. DeWalt FlexVolt Advantage doing actual FlexVolt things we've never seen before. It's all good enough to have required purchasing more load testers to have in parallel since our 1200 watt ones don't seem to like angle grinders and develop a water cooling solution for our dyno because things are about to get heated. And that includes this heart, which from our last episode has gotten a bit of an update in the form of the largest battery they make, the six amp hour. We originally bought the heart as a budget entry, so figured not worth the coin to splash on this with a spendy battery, but then it went and made the same power that some grinders make with high performance 21700 cells with just a four amp hour battery. So while the six amp hour may not have 21700 type cells inside, it's got not two rows, but three rows of 18650s now, which should be good for a fair amount of discharge amps. So already putting on some RPM over its four amp hour self here under load, this is how it stacks up against this closest competition, maxing it out in watts on the dyno. 620 watts. And with that larger battery, you might not be surprised to learn that it lasts longer now too, under some light to medium grinding tasks. Up to 11 minutes, not a ton of time, but also higher RPM than in Milwaukee during that, which means still getting a fair amount of work done. And when we're scoring with the new battery, that's decent points. Enough so that all said, the value of this tool hasn't changed all that much when looking at the new higher price point, and with the heavier weight penalty here, still scores 487.9 points, bumping it up into second place now and placing its 4 amp hour self in the standings. If we're being honest though, Milwaukee also makes battery upgrades as well, so we'll be visiting this combo when we look at our performance only rankings coming up that ignore silly things like weight, vibration, and cost. Up first today though, to try and unseat that Milwaukee from its current spot is the non-TTI made tool, Bosch. This is Bosch's newest angle grinder, the GWS 18V-10N, that 10 meaning it's supposed to replace a 10 amp corded model, and we'll see about that as well. This new model goes for everywhere from 175, 160, sometimes 140 bucks. It's worth checking as it changes a lot, but at the time of making, the price for a kit as tested with the eight amp hour Pro Factor battery is $297, which puts it actually maybe just 10 to 15 bucks over the Hercules. Would not have guessed that. And with that eight amp hour 21700 cell pack on, it's comparatively light, weighing six pounds even, which is pretty good. About as much as a Makita LXT with just a five amp hour battery. Its hardware also uses this style of washer with a ring that unfolds, so you don't need to use a wrench and that's sort of nice. Let's take a look at what it can do on the dyno. Our first test is a 200 watt load, what kind of RPM it makes under that. This gives you an idea under simple tasks such as this, how much material it's gonna be removing. So the Bosch makes around 67, 60 in RPM under this kind of load better than the Milwaukee so far, but that's not the m 18 strong suit. Not bogging down is, and that's what the next test is all about. The dyno will put more and more load on the tool until it bogs down under 4,000 RPM or cuts out. Around half the free speed of many of these tools, but it's not all about power. Some surprising info on these tools coming up after the dyno sessions. In case you're curious, with a four amp hour core battery, this tool makes 6,160 RPM under load, and it maxes out with that battery at 430 watts. But with the eight amp hour battery they recommend, that easily passes the 400s, well into the 500s, and makes it up to 580 watts before it stumbles and can't keep up. Quite good, under the Milwaukee that's $100 more as a kit, and over the Hercules for around the same price. More to come from this tool coming up as we look at runtime and vibration. All right, next up we got a double header for you. Viewer in front of the channel, Josh the Tool Dude, wanted to see how his rigid octane grinder compared to his newer gen rigid model that just goes by brushless. There's been some back and forth about whether rigid's latest stuff is actually better or why they discontinued octane to begin with, or if it's just a new price hike on the new models. So this will help shine some light onto that. And one thing that will aid in that quest is this eight amp hour battery Josh sent with these. The brand's first 21700 cell offering in a battery larger than three amp hours. Though it is $200. 
Yep. And can only really buy it from Home Depot, so unlike DeWalt batteries, we may find cheaper to put these together. That's a flat $200 tax on the tool to make the power it can make, which won't help it in its standings at that price. We'll of course check out the standard 4 amp hour max output as well, as that's miles cheaper offered as a complete kit, and score it with what it does best with. But we're going to be leading with the beans now with the 8 amp hour pack. The Octane sports an industry leading 10,000 RPM free speed and uses that to pump up its score under load for 8,500 RPM while doing some grinding. That will be a lot of material removal. The new brushless model has a lower free speed of 9,000 RPM and yeah, around the same deficit here under load for 7,500, which is still very good as you can see ranked here. But the brushless model is saying stuff like 25% more powerful, so let's stall these out and find out. The Octane has earned a reputation of being a powerful grinder despite the brand not classifying it as a 5 inch, just 4.5. And, and despite that, and its generation age, it puts up 690 watts before giving up. Topping the later model and 4.5 to 5 inch categorized Milwaukee, that's more money from the same TTI outfit. This crazy stuff. It's an uphill battle for the new brushless generation, but really when you look at new models that we've tested, they've all been smaller, like smaller hammers inside too. But inside they've always had new, more powerful motors, and that's sort of what this tool is. Seen here climbing past the 600s now, it takes the mid 700s to slow this thing down and eventually cause it to give up. 750 watts and a hefty lead over everything else we've tested before. It's really a monster, with a battery that costs considerably more than the tool. So here's a look at the 4 amp hour max output versus the 3 amp hour octane that they've discontinued. The octane grinder, which put up an impressive 690 watts before, gets that understandably downgraded to the tune of 520 watts with the 4 amp hour max output. With the 3 amp hour octane sharing its namesake, that does improve things to 540 watts, as we tend to often see. But what about a tool, a newer tool, that does not have Octane in its name, and does it make more power with an Octane battery? Its previous 750 watts becomes 580 with the max output, and 600 watts with the 3 amp hour Octane. The same 20 watt improvement we're seeing here, not that I would use a 3 amp hour pack on a grinder, but it is sort of our job to cut through all that marketing wank and just show you the data here. Very impressed with these rigid models, especially when you put the battery on them that they're craving. Alright, last up, and certainly not least, the DeWalt Flexil Advantage DCG416. They do make a 418 60 volt model, but I don't think anyone would be surprised if a 20% heavier 6 inch capacity grinder beat all these 4.5 and, and 5 inch models. It wouldn't even really get bragging rights, but we do want to test that category too, so let us know what models you want to see. Now this is the Flexful Advantage grinder, which comes with it in BOGOs and kits, a 6 amp hour Flexful battery that it's supposed to sense is Flexful and take advantage of that. We've had trouble in the past on drills with this sort of thing being, well, not true. So we'll also test it with the 6 amp hour XR battery we normally have luck with to compare as it's actually cheaper this way and the 9 amp hour flex volt, which is the size of battery we don't include in our main rankings, but we'll test today to take on the HD 12.0 Milwaukee for overall power standings, basically those bragging rights. It may sound silly, but sometimes to me getting to the bottom of these battery marketing claims is sometimes as fun as testing the tools themselves because we've so often seen the complete opposite of what they're claiming. Up first is the 6 amp hour XR battery, which I would grab knowing nothing else. Let's see that. So it's 7300 RPM under load. That's very nice. When we're talking maxing this tool out, increasing in load seems to almost do nothing to the tool. You see hundreds and hundreds of watts before this tool even notices it. It makes it to 750 watts, matching the best rigid. Good stuff. Now for the 6 amp hour flex volt, which just has 18650s inside, but a bunch of them. Strangely, 7470 RPM, so higher. When turning the screws to this tool, it feels no less impressive, piling on the watts until it eventually runs out of steam deep into the 700s, 780 watts. Yes, 780 watts, putting it atop all things and beating the 6 amp hour XR. Now that could sound trivial to you, but we have the raw data on these packs, just pulling straight up watts amps out of them. The voltage drop on a 6 amp hour flex volt 
is worse. It should be worse. The 21700 cells in the XR just perform better in discharge. So you may be asking why not use the 8 amp hour XR because, well, we tried that too. It did worse overall, as usual, 670 watts, 110 down from the 6 amp hour flex volt, which means I mean, the data is pointing towards this is not just a flexible advantage Home Depot exclusive versus Lowe's power detect flavor sort of situation. Some type of actual programming in this tool favors flexible batteries, resulting in it performing better and not just being marketing wink. For the first time, we have evidence of it. Happy days. Which means this 9 amp hour flexible must absolutely slap. And it doesn't disappoint that Milwaukee is able to, once strapped into an HD 12.0, turn things up to 730 watts up from 680 okay the dewalt on the other hand yeah this is where the water cooling comes in handy because at the beginning of this episode the highest we ever saw was 670 watts and now we're cruising into the 800s the 9 amp hour flexible advantage grinder makes 850 watts peak which will look mighty nice on the power rankings at the end of this episode when tallied with rpm now all that power means not so much if it kills a battery or quits on you after a few minutes, which is why we show you here, like nowhere else on the interweb since no brands advertise this stuff, how long these last on a battery with that light to medium grinding task of 200 watts, with RPM during that showing you how much work is being done. This is what that looks like, the Bosch following a similar curve as the Milwaukee, just more RPM though, representing more work being done under that load throughout. As well as less tail off at the end, it did last 30 seconds longer, 16 and a half minutes. The Rigid has a similar relationship with the Bosch, all using the same battery size here, more RPM than either, holding that gap, but paying a little bit for it by finishing a minute earlier with 15 and a half minutes on that brushless model. The DeWalt is, well, in a league of its own, but not for the normal good reasons. It maintains high RPM, yes, but... So the DeWalt just shut off. We're about six, six and a half minutes in. And it's not even that hot. 123, I mean, that's that's pretty hot. I have some black electrical tape on here for emissivity. Like 123 degrees. The battery's just getting warm, 77 but it cut off. So we started it back up and we saw this. So it stopped again around five minutes, four and a half. We're at still at 125 and 86, 89 degrees on the battery. And you'll notice we had the nine amp hour battery on here. We did this with a six amp hour, a 15 amp hour, same deal, five to six minutes. Tried doing it at 500 watts load to see if it was just heat related only, in which case it should shut off in like two to three minutes. Nope, the same five to six minutes. Whereas the Bosch got up to similar temperatures really less, and that was a full 16 and a half minutes of drained battery. And it also did a 500 watt test to see if these temperatures in the head got any higher, and it didn't, very nice, it did this until drained as well. The DeWalt just has some type of, I don't know, timer, motor sensor that says, that's enough, take a break. We could do these back to back for six and then four minutes, but would degrade in run time after that. We're talking 200 watt loads here, nothing crazy. And grinding, well, unlike briefly run tools like impact wrenches, maybe circular saws, we wanna dive into those too. Grinders are often used even longer than these batteries usually last. Because of all that potentially long use, by your guys' requests, we've also greatly considered now vibration. Maybe a brand like Makita LXT so far doesn't bring all the beans, but makes a damn fine balanced tool that's nice to use, and it deserves some recognition for that. The Milwaukee, for instance, makes 14 meters per second squared with a four and a half inch disc, and 45 with a five inch disc. We find you gotta hold these with the disc attached for the vibration to be accurate. Now that's increased to 45 on the Octane, and 68 with a five inch disc. This decreased by more than half if you took that disc off, and 55 and 40 with the brushless model, so it's not all upside by choosing Rigid over the more expensive Milwaukee, though not night and day either. The Bosch, on the other hand, in the hand, is noticeably smooth and gets seven meters per second squared on the four and a half inch disc and just 20 on the five inch disc. Oddly enough, we found this would increase drastically if you took the disc off, so definitely balanced for that spinning disc, which makes sense. The DeWalt also feels well built when using it, and this one comes in with 15 on the four and a half inch disc and 18 with the five inch. Very good. So we've hit you with a lot of data here. Let's see the ranking on these tools. 
The Bosch is the lightest as tested and thus starts with the lowest points deficit in the form of negative 120, the others looking like this. They are rewarded for their material removal rate in the form of RPM as 67.6, 86, 75, and 74.7. When maxing out the tools, like you might plunging a 5-inch cutoff wheel into some thick steel, their max watts are divided by 2 for 290, 345, 375, and 390 points for the 6 amp hour flexible version of the DeWalt that it scored best with. For that power, you will have to put up with this much vibration for each, which is a negative and gets negative points. The rigids here are getting penalized most for the highest vibration of the bunch, though not quite Hercules levels here. Their runtime in minutes, as well as how much spinny spinny action they did under load in that runtime, is accounted for here as 165 and 51 points. This being how much total work was done with that battery. Then 150 and 56.5, 155 and 53 for the brushless, the Octane lasted a bit less time, but both did a similar amount of work on the same battery. The DeWalt is going to get dinged here. We're going to score it with the best it could do back to back with no break, starting that tool back up. So that's 10 minutes and 73,000 revolutions. Not sure if that's too harsh or letting it off easy here. You tell us how yours does after a lot of use in the comments. We're open to your thoughts. Now as a function of all this performance and build quality and the price as tested here, that's 143.6 points, 120.8, 121.9, these getting hosed a bit for that spendy 8 amp hour, and 125.7 for the DeWalt, and that has a pretty expensive 6 amp hour flex volt, but doesn't care, it just brings the beans. That totals 570.2, 519.3, 560.9, and 571.9, putting all of these atop the previously atop Milwaukee, that's insane. With the DeWalt on top, but basically comparing equally across all metrics with these other two. Knowing what I know, for the odd job, I'm picking up the Bosch. It can be found pretty cheap sometimes in its 8 amp hour battery also for that matter. If the job is going to be a hairy one, needs some grunt, both the Rigid and the DeWalt are likely going to tear through it with massive amounts of power. The Rigid having the edge maybe for longer jobs. But when we're talking only power, those of you with our power rankings will notice a new tab here. Each tool is ranked purely by performance, ignoring everything else like price, vibration, how long it lasted, and over here purely by how smooth each one registers. In power, the DeWalt taking it here handedly with the 9 amp hour flex volt, and the Makita and Bosch over here doing very nicely for themselves in smoothness. But really the DeWalt, again, placing well over here too. Appreciate you joining us for this one and for suggesting these damn good grinders, which would make me put away my red batteries in a hurry. We make stuff like this at least every Friday. Click subscribe to join us for those, and thanks for watching.